Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome back to a YouTube video. Today I want to talk about a topic that I've been wanting to chat and make a video about for a while, and that is a digital point and shoot setup. Now, in the past, film point and shoots have really kind of been my favorite go-to for capturing daily life and you know, kind of those in-between candid moments of life. And I've used a various amount of different point and shoot cameras for the last several years now, probably the last like five or six years, I would say. And I wanted to find a digital setup that not only mimicked the experience of shooting on an analog point and shoot camera, but also delivered similar results. And I think I finally found it. So before I talk about my digital setup, I wanted to kind of backtrack here and talk a little bit about my kind of entrance into the point and shoot world and kind of my experience over the years shooting with different point and shoot film cameras and eventually how I kind of slowly started to transition to a digital setup. Now, let it be known that I don't think it's entirely possible to perfectly replicate the setup and also the ease of use and just the overall experience of shooting with a point and shoot film camera. To me, it's one of the best experiences out there in photography and I love the images I've been able to take over the years. Now, over the last actually eight years or so, between 2023 and 2015, I've owned various different point and shoot film cameras, including Context T2s, T3s, Nikon 35Ti's, Leica Mini Luxes, pretty much any camera you can think of, I've probably at least tried it, let alone owned it for an extended period of time. And over those years, I've always gone back to Contax cameras, specifically the T3, I think for me is the best point and shoot camera that you can buy. And for how I like to shoot and just, you know, the quality of the optics in such a small form factor, it's really hard to beat the Contax T3 setup for me personally. Now, obviously, there's something to be said for how expensive Contax cameras are nowadays and also how fragile they are. I've owned several of these T3s and the main reason being they break a lot, especially if you get a single tooth version. You definitely want to make sure that it's well taken care of. I've had numerous single tooth T3 versions break on me to the point where I'm just kind of tired of paying six, $700 to get them fixed. And I went ahead and picked up a double teeth version. And I've had this exact copy now for several years. And before that I had probably two, maybe three other T3s that I shot quite a bit of images on over the years. Now to me, a point and shoot setup is just that. I want to be able to turn it on, maybe turn on flash, point, click, and be done. And I don't want to have to think too much, you know, when I'm bringing out my bigger cameras, my R5, my GFX, my Mia 7 II, those cameras just take a while to take a great photo. And obviously they have their benefits in terms of image quality and, you know, especially on the Mamiya 7 II, how beautiful a 6x7 negative is over something like a 35 millimeter scan. But to me, when I'm capturing daily life, I just don't want to have to lug around a massive camera. I want it to be able to fit in my pocket, ideally, if not around my neck. And I want it to be inconspicuous to the point where I can take photos of family, of friends, of life happening in front of me, and it's not going to obstruct life. So that's the ultimate goal, I think, bar none, is that it's not really going to infringe upon my daily life. But more importantly, I also want to be able to capture really high res, beautiful photos with whatever I'm taking a photo of. Now, I've taken point and shoots all along my travels across the world to Asia, to New Zealand, Australia, to different parts of Europe, and also on many, many, many various road trips around the mainly Western United States. And I always just seem to gravitate towards a smaller camera, especially when the trip is for a personal reason. I love being able to just kind of throw something like the T3 in my pocket and maybe also a few rolls of film and be able to shoot with it whenever I please. And all these sort of benefits were really driving factors for me for using a T3 for so long. Again, I've taken some of my favorite photos of all time with this camera. And time and time again, the quality of the scans are just so beautiful. So I really have enjoyed and still do enjoy shooting on this camera. It's a very special camera to me. Now for me, when looking at a digital setup, I wanted to try and emulate not only the experience of shooting with something like a T3, and to me when it comes down to an image taken with a T3, there's a few things that stand out. First and foremost, the flash is so amazing on this camera. So I really wanted to find something in the flash department that worked really well for my setup. So after all that research, I ended up with the Fuji XF20 flash. Flash. I purchased this on eBay about four months ago, and I will say they are pretty pricey, but I really wanted something that kind of mimicked the look and feel of an analog image. And from what I had seen on various YouTube videos and photo blogs and stuff like that, this flash was going to be able to do that for me. So I recently took this XF20 on a trip to Japan and paired it with my Fuji X-T5 and kind of brought it around during some night markets in Tokyo and also just kind of some nights out on the city. And I really, really like how this flash performed. It just looks great. It feels very analog, but also at the same time, it's clear, it's crisp, the flash itself is bright enough to be able to kind of capture any sort of scenario I'm looking for. And it's also very inconspicuous. It's not a massive flash. I don't want a massive kind of speed light on top of my camera. I wanted something small, kind of compact, again, that kind of mimicked some sort of point and shoot look and feel. 
Now with this flash, I obviously needed a camera to pair it with, and for this I chose the Fuji X-T5. Now you guys know by now, the Fuji X-T5 has become a camera in my regular rotation over the last six months or so. I really love this camera. It's really changed a lot of photography for me in terms of how I shoot. I bring it a lot more places than I normally would with other cameras, and it's allowed me to kind of get back into shooting photos a lot more regularly, especially when I'm just experiencing life. When I'm out with friends, I'm on a road trip, I'm with family, whatever it may be, this camera, again, just kind of allows me to take the photo and be done with it very quickly. I don't have to lug around a massive medium format setup or a full frame setup. The camera itself is very small, and then you tack on the Fuji XF20 flash, and it's a nice, simple, compact setup that I can bring pretty much anywhere that I want. In terms of lenses, I have the 27mm pancake lens on here currently, but I really do love the 23mm f2. I would say that's definitely my favorite lens because it mimics sort of a 35mm equivalent focal length. Definitely my personal favorite focal length. The 27mm is a little closer to 40, and as someone who shoots 35mm equivalent focal lengths, quite a bit. I do notice the extra millimeters, even though it's a four millimeter difference. The main reason why I picked up the 27 millimeter originally was to get this sort of pancake look and feel to the setup itself. And as you can see here, the lens is so small, it has a very small kind of bezel to it. So again, the 27 mil with this flash with the X-T5 just works perfectly and it's nice and small and compact. So to me, this is pretty much the perfect digital point and shoot setup. Again, are there smaller cameras on the market? Of course. Are there cameras that you know have different megapixel counts and full frame capabilities? Of course. But to me, this is a really nice, clean setup that I can bring pretty much everywhere with me. And I have been as of late. Now, whether it's just the X-T5 or I chalk on the flash for a night out or a dinner party, the setup is just really simple and I can swing it around my neck. Um, I can be kind of hidden for the most part. And then when I bring it out and take a few quick photos, I can swing it back around my neck and act like nothing happened. To me, the setup really ticks all the boxes. It has a really small lens, as I said, especially the 27 millimeter pancake. The flash is nice and easy to use and it's very small. The only thing I will say about the flash is you definitely need several sets of AAA batteries because this flash does die very quickly. But in terms of the actual performance of the flash, it's perfect. Now, pairing all of this with the beautiful sensor on the X-T5, 40 megapixel sensor and the ability to shoot RAW and JPEG, you have a perfect digital point and shoot setup that's great for any scenario. Now to me personally, nothing is gonna be able to perfectly replicate the beautiful images that I've been able to take on the Contax T3, but I wanted something, again, that wasn't gonna keep breaking the bank. As you know, film is getting really expensive and this felt like the perfect kind of way to still document daily life very regularly, but not have to shell out continuous amounts of money for film. And in turn, it's made me use film a lot more sporadically but at the same time, I feel like a little more intentionally as well. I'm actually heading up on a road trip here with my mom up the coast for Christmas, and this Contax T3 is going to be the perfect camera for that trip. Nice and small, and I want to shoot some black and white film, keep it super simple, and the T3 will be perfect for that. So now that I've shown you my digital point and shoot setup, I would love to end this video by showing you guys some of the photos I've been able to take over the last six months. Some of these are with the flash, some of these without, but overall this camera has been just a wonderful companion to be able to document my life. Enjoy. Now, before this video wraps up, I did want to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, which is Squarespace, for sponsoring today's episode. As you guys know by now, Squarespace is a longtime supporter of this YouTube channel and my creative endeavors. 
and I can't thank them enough for their continued support. To me, Squarespace is simply put just the easiest way to build any sort of website. Whether you're creative, looking for a great way to display your work, sell e-commerce products, or even just have a great landing page for potential clients to find you, Squarespace makes this process extremely easy and seamless to do. The best part is you don't have to know any sort of coding or any technical knowledge of how to build a website. All you do is simply drag, drop, and add your photos, and you can make a website in minutes. I've been using Squarespace now for almost my entire photography career, and I can't recommend them enough to anyone who's looking to start and make a great website. If you guys wanna check out Squarespace for yourself, there'll be a link down in the description to receive 10% off your first website or domain purchase. Thank you so much to Squarespace, as always, for sponsoring this video. Thanks to you guys for watching. We'll see you next week.